Alright, hi everybody, in today's video I'm going to be covering the Armor of Forger roadmap that just got released by the devs. This roadmap they released covers the next three major updates they intend to release, and exactly what will be in them. So without any more delay, let's just get right into this. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's just get right into this roadmap. In order to make sure this is as precise and concise as possible, I'm really just going to be reading their roadmap plans verbatim and giving some minor thoughts on each little point. Um, because doing anything more than that would very quickly make this video very long and not really to the point. So starting off, their first milestone objective is going to be an update called Ground Support. This update is going to have a large amount of features focused around vehicles, cars, and AIs using them. So the first feature is going to be AI vehicle driving. AI are going to be able to drive all ground vehicles present in the game, as well as have some sort of on-road ability, probably being able to follow roads and navigate. Weapon deployment. Deploy your weapon for stabilization while prone. Use interactive bipods on weapons. Just going to be a better prone system, allowing more accurate fire while prone. Commanding, command whole groups of AI by issuing basic commands. Move, search, and destroy, follow, and mount. AI can join or unjoin the group dynamically. It's really just an upgrade to how you can command AI in general. Health system enhancements, new medical items, multiple hit zone self-bandaging, better ride dolls, so really just better healing. Dynamically generated scenario, new playable solo or co-op scenario, dynamic objectives to complete, detailed compositions for the objectives. So really a new solo single player PvE experience for you to play if you are not too much into the PvP experience. Also, Game Master will be getting an update, which will be the introduction of a quit entry browser that will allow you to quickly save presets of what entities you wish to place and being able to interact with objects in the world such as doors, pianos, radios, and most importantly, toilets. Um, using this browser, really going to be able to give you more control and more ease of access in utilizing entities in your Game Master rounds. Uh, moving on to conflict, freeform building will be uh, services and fortifications can be built anywhere near the supply source and really an advance to buildings interface overall, so really just making building easier. Um, a base seizing overhaul. Um, bases will no longer be captured with the current system. They're going to be captured with something called a dominancy feature. Um, so a faction must seize and hold several strategic points in order to take a uh, base. And it's going to have a semi-randomized starting points of HQs. So really just going to be making conflict base taking less, you know, you sprint in, you grab the radio, and more so actually requiring more strategy and positioning and actual occupation of the um, location. Um, barracks, they fix the number of AI defenders are going to be spawning in the bases and as well as decreasing the price of the deploy ticket. Um, in order to expand a base, a depot will be built up and will need to have a storage supply, which is going to be a supply depot that's going to be added. Um, they're going to be increase. They're going to be adding an antenna, which is going to increase the basic signal of the radio, kind of uh, like the current radio tower we have. But since that feature won't really be doing what it's doing now, this is kind of the replacement. Um, moving over to supply management, vehicles and deploy tickets will cost supplies, and you will have to fight for supply depots that are scattered across the island. So really, making resupplying and supply lines more important. Um, there will be a new island, a new map added uh, called Arland. Um, so that's going to be cool. There's going to be a conflict map on it. Excited for that. Um, we got some new mines. These are going to be placeable explosives and vehicles if they drive over it will explode. Um, there's going to be more destructibles. More props are going to be able to be blown up. And there's going to be a protractor tool on the map. On top of all of this, this first major update will also include the additions of the VZ-58P and the VZ-58V, which is going to be a more telescopic um, scope version. There's going to be anti-tank mines, which were previously mentioned, a new American rifle, the Colt 420, and um, some new medical assets, as well as some new Soviet and U.S. ambulances. It also says on here the addition of animals, as well as saying that it's going to be birds. We can assume that the creation and addition of birds is going to really mean the basics of some more AI thinking that's less human. Could possibly allude to other things in the future, or it could just be a cool little thing sitting in the background. 
we really won't know until it's added. Moving over to the second milestone, the second major update that devs are planning, we have Air Assault. This update, as the name suggests, will be mainly featuring and focusing on aviation and you know stuff in the air like helicopters. I mean, in which we are going to be getting a one main standard helicopter and two transport helicopters. Um, there's going to be mounted machine guns on these helicopters. Going to be controllable by players, and they're also going to have custom pilot gear for the players who use these. There's going to be the addition of an unconscious state of character. I'm guessing this would be what happens if you get killed in certain spots. I can't imagine like a headshot would result in this, but maybe. Um, and you will be able to revive these unconscious characters. Um, we don't. We'll have to see how this exactly works when it's implemented. Um, there's going to be new ballistic protection, so new ballistic vests and new helmets that are going to protect an shrapnel and just better protection overall. Um, world interactions, there's going to be electricity, so a new electrical network on the island with buildings, transformers, and lamps that are going to be connected to this electricity system. And you're going to be able to interrupt and repair this electricity system to impair and change the, the map flow and what the enemies and your team have. Um, if your area is filled with electricity, you will have uh, light in your building, so the lights will turn on. Fuel system update, there's going to be a possibility to refuel vehicles, um, fuel nozzles, improved fuel consumption, really just fuel will become an actual supply, um, which is going to be nice. There's going to be a Game Master update, which will allow you to place artillery strikes, smoke shells, and other effects, as well as linking waypoints with specific entities, like for example, a waypoint for destroying a specific vehicle and the like. Um, there's going to be, in conflict, more supply management. Um, as was kind of said in that first update, the addition of supply depots, there's going to be some warehouses with lots of supplies that both factions will have to fight for, and supply runs will be necessary to really interact with that. Um, and there will be two types of supplies, one for ammunition and one for building. Um, save slots, so there will be multiple save slots for playable content, such as Game Master and Conflict. So we're going to have to see how that really plays out, but that sounds really interesting, meaning you could possibly save your Game Master uh, builds and possibly come back to them in the future. Melee, all weapons will be able to be used for melee in the game. Um, suppressors, you will be able to attach a suppressor to a weapon. The suppressor will, of course, you know, make it quieter, um, which will change the effects on the weapon it is attached to. Uh, new gear that's coming with that second update, we have a new heavy machine gun, the NSV, some flares, some new ballistic protection, some flight suits, some optics, bayonets, suppressors, and of course the new helicopters in the vehicles, as well as I think a truck I think is the other vehicle that's coming with um, that update. So finally, we finish off with the third major update that I have planned, which is going to be called Final Strike. This update is um, going to be very much focused on artillery, as well as polishing the first two updates uh, to a more perfect form. To start off, this update will add a new feature of light artillery. These are going to be mortar pieces that both players and AI can control. Um, we're looking at 81 to 82 millimeter mortar ammunition. They're just deployable and assembled using parts that you probably will have to get from supply centers, and they're manually operable. You're going to have to use elevation and azimuth to just aim these motherfuckers the way you do actual uh, artillery. So I don't imagine they're going to be something easy to use, but this is Arma. It shouldn't be easy to use. Um, so buildings will be more destructive. Um, we're going to have remotely time detonating and time fused explosives as well as the ability to save your game master, save scenarios from those saves we got in the previous update. Uh, you're going to be able to share those with other players. Um, in conflict, there's going to be an update to freeform building. Uh, bases will not have predefined places, forcing the opponent player to locate the opponent's place first. Bases can be built anywhere on the island, and the only limitation is radio range and the number of supplies. So really just going to have a lot more freedom with base building. Conflict, looking at HQ's role, um, the AI is going to be deciding on the strategy, but the HQ's role defines the objectives for the faction. A player can take over this role and decide strategic decisions, but AI will be conducting supply runs and really the general situation of the HQ. Um, moving into the, the new assets that are going to be coming with this last update, we have two new mortars, the M252 mortar and the 2B14 mortar. Tanker outfits, light machine guns, going to be a UK-59L, an assault rifle, an M16A2, explosive charges, anti-personnel mines, civilian clothing, as well as when we're looking at the vehicles, a LAV-25, a BRDM-2, a Skoda S105, a flatbed truck, 
and a helicopter weapon system. So really that's going to be going back to the previous update, a more updated um, helicopter going to be just making it so it's more aggressive. It's really all this roadmap puts out. It's a lot of information about what is probably going to be the next year of updates. And though we have very vague systems and vague explanations now, I'm sure they'll get more precise and more detailed as we get closer to the update in question. Hopefully this has gotten you guys excited about the future of the game as much as it has me, and hopefully my coverage of it was at least adequate in the basics. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I hope to see you guys next time.